good evening, everybody, and welcome to episode two of the Primecast, a uh, something I have dug into the crypt of my old content and decided to try and breathe new life into it to kind of fill the void from the loss of the weekly wrap up. I am your host, Jay Coon Prime, and of course, I am not alone in this endeavor. So we're going to take this opportunity to introduce our very, very awesome co-host. Porter Gamer. Porter, welcome to the show, man. How you doing? Good. How are you? Excellent. 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 You ready for a good show tonight? I certainly am. I am too. Uh, let's see something here. That okay. takes a minute to ramp up, apparently. So StreamYard has background music. You can just add. Oh, okay. Cool. So like, I'm kind of fiddling with that a little bit. But as we did before, we also have a lovely panel of guests to join us for our topics of discussion tonight. Uh, this one needs no introduction because, well, he was here last week. So get ready for, uh, you know, long-winded speeches and monologues about anything and everything anti-PBE. None Not other than Mr. Lionheart himself. Hello, Lion. <laughs> What's up, Jay? What's up, Order? <laughs> Hello. We're doing good. We're doing good. Uh, a lot has gone down, down this week. That, right? <laughs> Just had to throw me under the bus with that. <laughs> hey, it's all in good fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. And next up, this man, if you follow him on Twitter, he definitely needs a no introduction. But for those of you that don't follow him on Twitter, you should be because he is going to instantly brighten your day. The doctor of Yamanomics himself, Juju, <laughs> or Oval Chief Poppy, the Yam Ambassador has arrived. I have made it. I have made it. Thank you for having me. We're, we're going to amend that. Uh, Yamanomics is now Yamthropology. Thank you kindly. Um, <laughs> very glad to be here. Um, Good to be with the homies. Order was going on. Jay was going on. Hello. Ryan. Just, yeah. Good to be here. Good to be here. Thank yeah. y'all so much for having me. <laughs> All right. So uh hopefully we have your attention for the next couple of hours. Ryan, just so you know, we once again came prepared. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, mine's will be here soon. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, boy. So from there, we like to start the show off with something really, really simple. We just kind of want to gas everybody up a little bit. So I'm just going to kind of go around the panel here and we're going to start with you, Hoarder. What have you been playing this week or what was something cool that happened to you this week? So I've been playing um, Path of Exile, the campaign, because I was going to start like the whole end game where it's like running maps, it's called, and like trying to do that. But I was like, you know what? I can't really do that until I do the campaign. It's massive. It's like 10 acts and I'm like six to eight hours in and only on act two. So I don't know how long that's going to take, but I've been doing going between that. And then I've been streaming um, Stellar Blade. Yeah, we'll be touching on that one later. <laughs> and then I got to play some Suicide Squad last night with Hero Mentor. Oh, awesome. Yeah, we uh, unfortunately, Peter Odin was supposed to join us tonight, but he is feeling under the weather. Uh, we definitely uh, send him good energy and here's hoping to a speedy recovery. Yes. Uh, I reached out to All Wrong and he also reached out to Hero and things just didn't line up. And I was just kind of like, yeah, you know, four people on a panel will be more than adequate. I, I think we'll be okay. But from there, yeah, the popcorn is definitely a little burnt. That is unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, culinary schools, uh, skills. You don't use it, you will lose it. <laughs> Oval team, what have you been playing or what was something cool that happened to you this week? So uh, back on the looter shooters again, been playing Division 2 as well as Destiny. Uh, just wrapped up the manhunt for the season, um, kind of bang out this whole Kelso storyline. Uh, really dope. So if you're on it and you haven't gotten a chance to play, definitely check it out. Uh, something cool that happened to me, um, kind of a grand reveal here. I know I'd mentioned it on Twitter earlier. Um, in addition to cultural combos being part of Combo Breaker, uh, Rick, Kat, um, and the crew there have been gracious enough to give me a little show office that I can record episodes in uh, for the weekend if folks aren't comfortable coming up to the room. Um, there may be a little bit of an echo, but of course, you know, I'm getting there early to do some audio testing. 
and um this has just been mentioned to me as of three or four days ago um rick's gonna try and make it on the show so hey, hopefully nice. Nice. we got some time we'll be sitting down having rick on for a chat and kind of getting to learn more about him um not just as an you know an event runner as a director as a to um really just more of him as opposed to you know uh are the hodo and rick one in the same or is it you know kind of two sides of the same coin we're gonna find out for the uninitiated because i know we do pull quite a few uh casual gamers and i'm trying to kind of slowly expose y'all to the fgc side of things uh rick or rick the hado he is a pretty big figurehead in the fgc he runs and owns combo breaker which is a uh, big tournament in chicago right in mortal Kombat's backyard and he also recently became the event organizer i believe Correct. Uh, GM, general manager. And general manager for the Evolution World Championship Series, which is the big international event in Las Vegas and Japan, which we will be discussing a little bit later. Ryan, look more bored. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually chilling, man. I'm, I'm loving this. Uh, uh, what have you been what playing? Have I been playing? Cool that happened to you. All right, I got you. Uh, My therapy session doesn't count. Damn. <laughs> I've been playing a lot of Destiny, man. And that's that's really hard to say. I mm-hmm. have been playing a ton of Destiny as of late. We hey, talked I'm about the little like, rhymes I'm and reasons of why things have been happening. No need to really get back into it, but that's really what I've been playing. As far as what's been something that something cool happened to me this week. Eh, my week has been pretty uneventful. I know I'm kind of Shy went out the club at the club, but uh yeah, no, nah, that's pretty much been my week. You're the you husk of the war server. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I mean I can respect that. Like back back when I did, you know, go clubbing, you know, back in the days when I had hair. I, I was very much that guy as well, like the guy that's just kind of off smoking in the corner, just kind of watching the room. He's not drinking, he occasionally gets up and does karaoke, but then he goes right back over to the corner, he's looking at his phone, just smoking and watching the room. Like, that that was my lot in life. It is uh, the vibes. Yeah, it, it's definitely just the vibe thing. Like, is that the bouncer? Go ask him. No. <laughs> <laughs> Problem is, it, it was a club. I probably was the bouncer. I, I've been, you know, security a couple times in my life. Yeah. Uh, I'll have a story about that later on. But uh, as far as I go, like, if you've been keeping up on social media, like, been playing a lot of Mortal Kombat, getting ready for Combo Breaker. Uh, we entered Tampa Never Sleeps Mortal Kombat tournament for, like, the first time. And uh, that didn't go too well, but there was a light at the end of the tunnel on that because TNS does this thing called the Redemption Bracket. Where if you accidentally get DQ'd or you miss your footing and you go 0-2 right out the gate, you can opt to enter into the redemption bracket and kind of fight your way back out. So while we definitely scrubbed out in the main turn, we won that shit. So yeah, that was pretty awesome. And then... I, I guess I mean it was cool to me, but John Cena followed me on Twitter. I hey. saw that. Yeah. <laughs> I, saw I, I guess that. the Peacemaker helmet was just like, yeah, I'm gonna follow Baldy over here. <laughs> like, <laughs> dude, that was sick. Yeah. Yeah. Are you sure you saw him? Yes, I, I am sure I saw him this time. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. No, it's fine. Like. At least Jay Shockblast can't hold that over my head no more. It's like, hey, he <laughs> follows me too, Jay. <laughs> but all right. Who's ready to get into the meat and potatoes of this? I am. Let's do it. Mm-hmm. All right. So we did have to call an audible really, really quick just before showtime. And that is because uh, Mortal Kombat dropped a sneak peek of Homelander. Like video in everything. So, when? huh? When? About like twenty hours ago. Two hours ago. On a Sunday? Yeah. <laughs> Man, uh, they heard Kendra drop, and he said, "We got to get right? in on this too." <laughs> like on the Sabbath, <laughs> you drop Homelander, and it's like, "Oh dear God." <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, so man. I thought it would be a cool idea to 
react to it together. What do y'all say? So hey, I'm down. Let's do it. All right. Oh dear God! Crazy. Really? <laughs> hey, yo. Crazy work! Come on! You have chosen war with a god. No, you have. You have. I can't tell if it's him or not. I can't either. Uh, it's whoever was in the booth was cooking. Oh, speaking of cooking. <laughs> Oh, that's messed up. <laughs> yeah. Well then, um, <laughs> sneak peek indeed. <laughs> oh. All right, so let, let's just go ahead and address the elephant in the room right away. Was the milk bit really necessary? <laughs> I I don't think it was necessary. I no. I don't think we needed that, but because it's Homelander, they're like, we, we going to go for it. What's mm -hmm. so funny about that, though, is if people haven't seen the show, or uh, I don't see. I don't know if that aspect is in the comic book. Um, but if people haven't seen the show, they don't even know what that means. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're you're right. If people never watch the show, they're just gonna be like, "What? What the heck is this?" But those of you that ha those of us that have watched the show, we're just like, "Oh dear God!" They did. <laughs> Very disturbing, we'll say. Yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna go on a limb and say a lot of people who are probably playing this game probably haven't watched the boy. <laughs> I swear I didn't do that one on purpose, <laughs> and they probably don't know this rep why he's doing this. So they're that, probably that like, tongue action. Look at that face. <laughs> oh man, that oh, is let me wild. Submit, let me move. And he's he's got and it's his dripping down, down his down chin, chin and brother. Oh <laughs> uh, man, this is freak bull activity. Definitely is. Like, <laughs> I don't know well, how I feel about order, that. Why don't, why don't you shed some light on the whole milk thing for the uninitiated? <laughs> who, oh who, boy, who, who me? Yeah, you. Okay, Come well, on, <laughs> um, that's actually like breast milk um and he had this weird um fetish slash thing where uh he didn't really have a like a caring mother type of situation so he looked at this one woman and that in that capacity and he's a psycho so it's all very kind of scary Okay. All right. So not not only are we seeing Homelander here, we're also seeing the appearance of the next cameo, which is going to be Farah from Mortal Kombat X. Oh, that is her. Yeah. That's and then her? we have Mavado here from Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, who will actually be coming into the game, I believe, this week. Uh, if not this week, 100% next week. I know he drops before Combo Breaker. A lot of people are looking forward to uh, Mavado and what he can bring to the table. But I definitely, they definitely made her older. Way older. Yeah, way older. That is a hell of a design upgrade. Yeah. And, uh, well, the pile of heads is a nice touch, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess you can't really ride around Tor anymore because he died at the end of MKX. So. Died is putting in my man got smoked. <laughs> well, yeah, I was trying to be quiet. <laughs> you know? Wasn't nothing I mean, played about how they did him. Yeah, that's yeah. I didn't play the story mode, so I didn't know what happened to Tor. I was just about to ask that, but you guys cleared that up. So Farah and Tor actually had like a on a genetic level symbiotic relationship. As Farah got older and matured, she basically started transforming into what Tor was, which was kind of like the host or the, the catalyst or what have you. Yeah. And as she matured, Tor slowly died until she basically wow. took his spot and then wow. she got a rider of her own. Right. So, yeah, the cycle just kind of continued. So I guess we're seeing her like right at her maturity cycle yeah. right after Tor died. That's pretty sick. Yeah. Now, this is going to be the big thing right here. Let's let's play this one more time. Or with a god. No, you have. 
who thinks that's actually Anthony Starr? <sighs> like he he said on Twitter a ton that he's not doing it, oh. but people can change their minds. They can. And if it's not him, can we just give all flowers to whoever is in the booth? Because they they put in some work. That was mm-hmm. that was very well delivered. That was insanely well delivered. And like, yes. I definitely had to take a double take. Just like I I can't tell if that's him or not. Like holy heck! Mm-hmm. If it ain't him, I'm shocked. Yeah. And then, uh, well, at the risk of demonetization here, let's see if we can get. Yeah, here we go. This shot alone scares me because I played Injustice (laughs) (laughs) and I am getting PTSD just looking at this. (laughs) I'm all for it. They give me forward to one, it's over. I'm all for it. Dude, don't speak that into existence. Ah, I'm all for it. Forward to one. (laughs) I need it. I I need it because I don't play the game. Y'all got to deal with it. I don't. You're a real friend, did you? <laughs> Listen, they might give me an MK bracket at combo brick, and I don't know how real I am yet. <laughs> ah. The reason why this is interesting to me is because I've actually been holding out for Homelander in MK1, despite actually not playing it yet. I've just been trying to see who's like a real staple zoning character. And I was just like, man, they're definitely giving him the eye beams, and he's definitely going to be on his Superman slash Cyclops kind of timing, you know? Uh-huh. So it's like, Man, hopefully he really fits that. I was kind of looking for that with Peacemaker, but not so much. But man, uh, Homeland is looking really good, and the voice I mean, actor, like Peacemaker, is a really solid zoner. Like you just got to play to his strength. Um, I mean, same with Shang Tsung, but like, let me not get totally off topic. Yeah, Homeland is looking good though. Yeah, this he looks dope. The, the big thing that always like bothered me about Homelander is like, why does everybody want to play the racist one? Yeah. Am I wrong? No, no, that makes sense. <laughs> well, when you put it like that. <laughs> yeah, like I don't want to play him. That dude's a jerk. <laughs> Listen, man, in bracket, you do what you gotta do. You gotta do what you gotta do, yeah. Man. You just gotta have a disclaimer. I I do not, you know, advocate or subscribe. <laughs> These win quotes do yes. not represent the views of the player. Just plaster that on the stream or put it on the back of your jersey at a tournament. <laughs> like, yeah, you want my that as sign. Does not represent my frame of mind i play him for the frame data not his social framing you feel me (laughs) (laughs) he's gonna have to set that one up from the start and yeah him him just launching the opponent into a plane which is a callback to season one and i believe the comic as Mm -hmm. well definitely that is that is so messed up but all right yeah that's wow (laughs) Less than a minute and took my breath away. Yeah, it's like 45 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's absolutely wild. That's how you make a splash. <laughs> yeah, get people talking about it, you know. No deal. Oh, so yeah. Movado comes out this week. If if not this week, it's next week for sure. Because he does drop before combo breaker. But so I, I got consoles yeah, to update at work. Right, right now. Yeah, one some book up. That is a character that I have not seen in a long while. Oh yeah, this week he drops Tuesday. Mavado mm-hmm. is Tuesday. When does Homelander oh. drop? Homelander. So I would say because they've been kind of staggering it. Like you get uh, a character, and then a couple weeks later you get the cameo, and then another couple weeks to a month you get the next character. I would say realistically, we're probably going to get Homelander early June. Okay. Because they're probably not going to release it too early. Because two weeks ago we just got Ermac, mm-hmm. so like they're they're not going to they're not going to double down like that. So like that's going to leave the big coin toss as to whether or not like is Takeda, who is the last character in the Battle Pass or Combat Pack. Sorry, got him mixed up. But Combat Pack One, yeah, Combat oh, Pack One. <laughs> he is the last one in Combat Pack One. Will Takeda make it out in time for Evo? Because I know a lot of people are like salivating at getting their hands on Takeda in time for Evo. So I'm actually kind of concerned from them because based on that time frame, we're not going to get Takeda in time for him to be tournament legal at Evo. Unless they do a double drop. 
which have they ever done that? This could be the curveball they throw us right before Evo. I mean, I'd be definitely be pleased to see it, that's for sure. Because we're what, day one's July 19th? If they give it to us by the first, maybe? That yeah, that'd be cutting it close, but that could work. Yeah, yeah. I think that I think that's our when's uh when's pro comp finals. I don't know. I, I know qualifiers are literally going on as we speak. Because mm. I actually have it on in the background. Okay. But all right. So one hell of a curveball. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to I'm not gonna say I'm looking forward to playing Homelander, but I'm definitely looking forward to beating Homelander. <laughs> Like I, I already, I'm look, uh, the Omni, Omni Dad. It, it's right there. Like I, I got Omni Man. I'm good. And then we've. Been I think he's an excellent villain. Back. As a villain, he's great. I think he's great. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But all right, it is time for what I'm forcefully considering a brand new segment of the show, and that is Jay and Hoarder's Double D's, and what <laughs> I can't even say it with a straight face. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna guess. It. I'm gonna let you cook. I'm gonna let you cook. Yeah. Thanks Jay for noticing. I did do D's. chest and triceps today. Thank you. Originally, I was gonna call this the twill this week in looter shooters, but I didn't want to rip off Bungie too much. So, double D's Destiny, Diablo, Suicide Squad. So, welcome to the looter shooter segment of the podcast. We're getting the hat on. So, you love it. I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I was trying to hold it together. You got me. All right. So since there is a ton to talk about in Destiny right now, Hoarder, why don't you take the uh take the reins? Guide us through what's going through in Diablo and Suicide Squad right now. I would love to. So May 14th is a massive day for Diablo fans because that's season four of Diablo 4. And the big deal here is this is the largest update slash drop of content since the game came out in June of last year. So mm. basically to make things very like, like simplified, cause there's like just an insane amount of details and like, God, probably about 20, 30 pages of patch notes. Uh, what we're looking at is them oh, going through and basically making everything far better than it was. First off, the big issue with the game since launch, itemization. Mm -hmm. So basically mm -hmm. itemization was problematic because there were a ton of different affixes on items. It took forever to sort through them. And also there was no like cool like path to power, but mm -hmm. now they're gonna in, uh, have a thing called tempering and mastering. So you'll be able to master a weapon up to level 12, but that basically starts at like level 100 deep into end game. So the mastering is a pr uh, process. Uh, I'm sorry. The um, tempering is a process before that roughly about, I'd say level like 40 or 50 or something like that, where you're making the weapons better. Mm -hmm. and they become once you get like to that 10 11 12 level for mastering way deep into the game some of the things are are almost like broken they're going to be absolutely crazy so it's going to be really neat to see how that works they they said they might have to make some adjustments like for the next season and stuff but within reason as long as it's not completely breaking the game or destroying servers <laughs> Uh, what I mean by that is that there's, a thing, <laughs> there's dust devils, and that's something Barbarian has. All these tornadoes everywhere. Well, in the PTR, which is their like uh, test version of the season before it actually is released, it's PC only currently, um, there were basically screens with like 30 or 40 dust devils mm -hmm. instead of like four or five. And if you were playing with multiple barbarians, all using dust devils, the game had like actual technical issues. They had to actually be like, okay, we need to tone this down. This went a little bit too crazy. Uh, so they're doing that. Then there's this awesome thing called Helltide. Helltide is this great way currently where if you're 
somewhat in the end game, like kind of early level, like tier three, tier four difficulty, uh, then you can actually go and uh, to this like giant open world area that changes every, I believe it is 55 minutes to different mm -hmm. regions and fight a lot of demons and do really cool events that only take place in Helltide. Well, now they're revamping Helltide and you can play it during the season in tier one and two difficulty. There just won't be all the same features. More features will be added as you ascend to tier three and tier four. So that's awesome because that is one of the best aspects of the game. And they went back to season two, the season of blood, which is with vampires. And it's considered by most players the best of the uh, three seasons we currently have had. Mm -hmm. And uh, they basically had this crazy version of Helltide with vampires. They took a lot of neat ideas from that, and they're putting that into this Helltide revamp. Plus, they're going to add a threat system. Similar to Grand Theft Auto, basically, as you upset the denizens of hell by fighting enemies and everything, they'll get more and more upset with you and send more like dangerous, nightmarish things your way. That's so kind of that's going to be really cool. You made hell mad. <laughs> you made hell mad, yes. You made the demons that are attacking Sanctuary really pissed. Uh, and then they've uh, basically added a new boss, an end boss called Endariel. So that's going to be fun, incredibly challenging. I think at Dario, they have a level 200 version. Okay, so this is how we go nuts here, okay, everybody? 100 is the max level you can get your character to. So then you have to be clever with the Paragon board, which is the system that's like after where you put in nodes and stuff, similar to like Path of Exile type of situation, kind of. And mm -hmm. uh, you got to look at that. You got to have your best weapons, your mastered weapon to level 12, as high as it'll go and stuff like that to take on Andariel that's like a level 200 threat. Plus oh, yeah. they're also adding the Pit which is the same thing similar to Diablo 3, where they had greater rifts. So you have a dungeon. You don't have any, like, objectives in this dungeon. It's just to kill the enemies and defeat the boss. But there's going to be, like, I believe it's 200 levels of the pit. And it gets more and more difficult as you go through each level. Okay, right so, on. and this is just season four. This isn't even the massive drop that's going to be the Vessel of Hatred expansion that's going to come out at before the end of the year. We don't have a date yet for it, though. So that's why people are really excited for Diablo Four right now. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. I unfortunately never got on the Diablo train, but I know that like it has a massive, massive following. So yes. I definitely want to make sure that like people in our audience that like. I, I may not mess with Diablo, but people in my audience might. So, like, yeah, let's make sure, hey, here's what's coming for you guys. And it sounds like y'all are about to have one hell of a time. No pun intended. Yeah, no pun intended. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it seems like y'all about to be eating good this summer. Yeah. Uh, yes. That ass. All right. Let's head into the uh, intensive care unit and uh, see what's going on with Suicide Squad. <laughs> okay. So, give me one second here. Uh, basically, people were very worried, <laughs> uh, to say the least, because no it was kidding. like <laughs> we were getting a blog every Friday, so they were communicating with us. Mm -hmm. But like that blog is on the Discord. You take a link from like uh, Twitter or whatever, so it's not like the easiest thing to find. Although the link will take you then to the official website. So. Yeah. Anyway, what is all going on? I actually have like little uh, screen caps of all this stuff. We have an infamy tier rework. So basically, the way it worked is you would have like these things like fear or something like that, like a concept like that. And you'd have levels that you would work through in order to get to a mastery level in order to get gear. So I know it's a little complicated, but basically, like, look at mastery levels 1 through 20 as mm -hmm. tier 1, uh, 30 okay. through 40 as tier 2, and then 50 through 60 and higher, tier 3. Well, they completely changed their mind on that, and now you'll be able to get tier 3 loot at, like, mastery 1. 
you have a possibility of doing that. It's not a guarantee or anything, but what they wanted to do is flatten things a little so you didn't have to just push and push and push to get really cool loot. Now, yeah, this is once you get into the mastery levels that are in like I mean, you don't even need have to go that high like Yeah. Once you get into like the 30s, like everybody and their brother is shooting at you. And yes. It's like, yeah. And like you can have five this, snipers this that are, are shooting at you at once. Like I've been targeted by like five snipers, helicopters. It gets very intense in the incursions. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is really cool. I'm looking forward to that. And then kind of like part of all that, uh, new grades of master level items. So up to level five. So basically the idea is if you're going into the higher mastery levels to fight, you have a better chance of getting a higher tier version of a master weapon. So weapons drop, but they also have a master version currently. Now mm -hmm. they're going to add four more levels to that master uh, item. So they add a chase. They realize that with a loot game, you need to have a chase. And that's why they wanted to add this. Now, they did something very smart, and we kind of really wanted this, and I'm happy about it. Every season, uh, actually every episode, so each season broken into two episodes. Episode two should be starting in like a week or two. We don't have an exact date yet. So uh, the way it works is in a three-month cycle, it's two episodes, so roughly six weeks between each. So there's okay. a drop every roughly six weeks. So mm -hmm. basically, they are adding corrupted items insane nearly broken versions of weapons and gear that you get from fighting brainiac so the thing is at the end like the boss you fight in any episode is a brain uh, brainiac but he's like altered to like have some aspects of a member of the justice league so with fear episode one it was green lantern and now it's going to be superman for fear episode two but you have a chance when you face him, your reward will be a corrupted weapon. Sounds so, like they actually saw Lejeune's tweet and went, you know, yes, idea. exactly. <laughs> Le Lejeune said that because like and uh, I fully agree there needed to be a reason to fight the boss more than once. Like yeah. to look back at something like Marvel's Avengers, a new boss showed up. You fought it a ton of times. You didn't just fight it just once and say, forget it. Now you actually have a reason because you want to get this crazy, insane, nearly broken loot by beating that boss. And I, they didn't say what the percentage Avengers. chance of the drop that. is, but you know, it's not going to be instantly that you're always going to get the corrupted item. So yeah. there's going to be like a, a, a bit of like the whole like game as a service vibe there where you're kind of working at that, I guess, uh, aspirational, I guess, somewhat. It sounds like, honestly, like it sounds like the Suicide Squad equivalent of a raid exotic from Destiny. Like you yes. might get it, but yeah, yeah, you're probably not. <laughs> yeah. And then we have, this is uh, something I'm very excited about, and I love how they said this, the Mutators Rework. So the more difficult mastery level you did, they would have a almost a hardship put on you where things were more difficult. Enemies would have certain defenses. Enemies would attack harder. Certain things wouldn't work on said enemies. And uh, now they're completely changing that because they realized what they were doing was giving us the stick and not the carrot. Yeah. So now mm -hmm. mutators are actually going to be gameplay bonuses that make it more fun to take the, the actual the battle to Brainiac and his forces. So that's going to be really cool. And like they gave you they kind of basically said it's like, you know, it's going to be certain like builds and things that you do will benefit a lot from these different mutators and like there's certain like advantages and things that you can take of the enemies that you're facing. And they also built that into the concept that Lex 2, who is Lex from Earth 2, that he is going to like basically analyze enemies and give information on their weaknesses and things like that. So there's a lot of really cool stuff here I'm looking forward to. Um, plus the world difficulty, only five levels. People thought that was too easy. They're adding three more. The open world itself has its own difficulty level. Now that that is progress because yes. I, I dealt with that a ton of like I'm I lost count how many times I had to go back and check my difficulty of like yeah I'm on world tier five why am I just deleting everything what is, what is this 
Because yes. the only experience I had with that was uh, me, me and Juju both played Division Two. You get yeah. up in the high world tiers, e- even the trash ads are a threat, and it's just like, uh, I shouldn't be here, huh? <laughs> All it takes is one dude with a shotgun, your day's wrecked because yeah. your armor is getting deleted, instantly cooked, like and, absolutely wild. And the one final thing, this is actually from Friday, a new game mode. And I'll do my best to just say what it says here quickly. Okay. So Brainiac is on the hunt for his next world to invade. He's phasing in corrupted Justice League watchtowers to locate his next target. By leaving these corrupted watchtowers partially phased in, they are invulnerable to attacks from the squad, which is where Hack comes in. That's a character that like hacks things and is like a digital uh, character comes in to lock them down and allow Task Force X to get smashing. Brainiac's forces will be assaulting Metropolis from two dimensions at once. Enemies in another dimension cannot be harmed, but will still cr- disrupt your ability to destroy the corrupted watchtower. That means your squad will be switching between dimensions to take out Brainiac's forces, lock down all the control points, and ultimately destroy the corrupted watchtower. So I think that sounds really cool. That sounds like that Gambit mode. They were yes, it does yeah. sound like the rumored <laughs> Gambit mode uh, that they were talking about coming to the game. And then what was really interesting is, uh, I think it was Iron Smash Web, but I'd have to double check for sure. Uh, they believe that this is like a gateway that that whole concept, the way they're doing that, is the way that they're going to do a lot of really cool game modes, and things are going to almost piggyback off that in the future. So I was really happy about the new game mode, because it definitely needs that. It needs new, new like, uh, super villains. There's things the game definitely does need, but I find it a lot of fun to play it. I do like it quite a bit. Hmm. Uh, With the dimension stuff, that sounds like Sundial almost. Yeah, oh. a bit. yeah, like the, the traveling through the corridors of time aspect. You hear one, can't be harmed in the other. That's the kind of vibe I'm getting from it. I that and kind of Seraph Towers right. with the whole defense hack. Like, this sounds pretty dope. Yeah, I'm so hoping it's going to be cool. And then, like I said, in about a week or two, it, it'll be that. And then we already know about something called the Daily Chuckle. It's a weird jokerized version of um, the Daily Planet. But we don't know if that's like a mini raid. We don't know if it's like a repeatable mission. We're not sure exactly what that is yet. Okay. Mm. Uh-huh. Uh, were there any more talks about it potentially being some type of PVEVP aspect? Like, like it is in Destiny with Gambit, where like somebody from another team can actually go over to the other side and wreck their stuff. That was the rumor. However, uh, that's all the info we have. That's directly from the blog that came out on Friday. Okay. All right. Um, well, I'm not, I'm not going to front. Like I've been on the sidelines just kind of looking in with Suicide Squad. Like... <laughs> Yeah, I'll go kill Superman again. Like, I'll go do that. But there's still just the longevity part of it of, like... Sure. Is it going to make me play any longer? Like, all right, I killed him. Well, all right. (laughs) Right now, the thing that (laughs) can possibly save it is really building up hype around the fourth character for Season 4, which is Deathstroke. Everyone's yeah. looking forward to Deathstroke and playing as Deathstroke. And uh, we're getting a gender-bent version of uh, Mr. Freeze and actually possibly going by the name Mr. Freeze, which I believe is going to be based off Blue's, um, Blue Snowman, which is an old-school character that was similar to Mr. Freeze, but it was a woman in a suit. Mm-hmm. But the suit was meant to confuse people and make her think that she was a male supervillain. So no one knew her actual identity would be. So it looks like they're kind of going with that concept. And then they're going with Floyd Lawton's daughter, Lawless. Yeah. So they need to build excitement for, I'd say, new supervillains. Because not everyone will be totally thrilled with those characters when they could be like, oh, why isn't it Parasite? Why isn't it Livewire? Why isn't it Cheetah? You know? Uh, So, (laughs) yeah, just, just, you know, just, you know, something to think of, I would say. All right. Appreciate the info dump on that. Uh, 
it's time to bore everybody to sleep. We're going to talk about Destiny. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, we are now in what week three, week four, week four of Into the Light. Yeah, uh, you can now fully craft your Whisper of the Worm all the way up to tier four. Uh, I actually ran Legendary Whisper yesterday with Juju and Lethal in the chat. And I got to say, I was kind of disappointed. Like, there was no change in the mission whatsoever other than a shortened timer. Like, I was like, it's legendary. I expected champions. And it's like, no, no champions. Nothing at all. All right, this is going to be a breeze then. So from there, and I know a few of us are going to have varying opinions on it, but Bungie dropped the world's biggest bombshell on Destiny players, and they are reversing the weapon sunsetting that came into place so many years ago. Ah. Yeah. So all those weapons you deleted, myself included. Same. They're going to be usable again. (laughs) Hoarder's Vault may be okay. Like, I know he hasn't played in about 10 years. So (laughs) It hasn't been. No, no. I played uh, some of the last expansion, actually. So I'm one of the Fairweather fans. I apologize. When the big expansion drops, I'm hardcore for like a month or two, maybe three. Uh, and then here and there, I'll I'll dabble in the season stuff. But, you know, for the most part, I just really look forward to the expansion. I'll definitely be playing uh, the uh, final shape, uh, I believe, June 4th, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, with that being said, knowing that a lot of us have deleted these old weapons, um, Bungie came out completely transparent and like, look, we know y'all probably deleted a lot of these. Some of these you'll be able to still get back from collections if you found them. The ones with random rolls, though, we're very sorry, and we're going to bring the weapons back in some fashion. So probably going to just keep adding to the Brave Arsenal. I didn't. I'm happy. You didn't? (laughs) I still got my quick draw mind benders. I still got my breach light. I still got so many other things just chilling in my vault. I should have kept breach light, bro. That is yeah, the man. one I'm really heard about. I miss uh-huh. my steel feather repeater. Yes, oh my god, what a good one. Yes, yeah. sir. I miss that weapon so so much. Mm. I'll be honest, I was not a big 720 user until that one came out. And mm-hmm. then I used it for everything. it was the sound. It was it the, was the sound, it was the, the sound. Look. The look, it yeah. shaded well. Like even mm-hmm. the default looked good, but it shaded well. Man, I, I can't say enough good things about that. Yeah, game. like the, the entire Saint weaponry, like all of it. I was <clears> a big <throat> fan of every single one of them. Even the patron of lost causes, the scout rifle. Like I, I had the goggle. Yeah. Wait. Lethal says Saint weapons are coming back. Yes, they are. They uh, those are already pretty much confirmed because in some of the promotional stuff for the final shape, you can actually see a guardian standing around holding the perfect paradox shotgun. Gotta, I mean, Saint's still in, still very pivotal Every story, time. still running trials. Like, might as well. Saint Tom, I think character I'm so popular that we went back in time to reverse his death. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But moving on from there, uh, I believe it's this week. Don't quote me on that 100%. We will see the arrival. I know Ryan's excited about this one. Of the PvP map pack. Three brand new maps coming to the Crucible. In the form of a Europa map under the name Eventide Labs, a Neomuna lab, uh, map under the name Cirrus Plaza, and then a Pyramid Ship map under the name Essence. And then we should also expect, I believe, I don't know if it's coming next week, but it is coming by the final shape. The Shadow Legion and the Lucent Brood Hive will be eventually added to Gambit along with. The other three maps that they took away from Gambit. Oh, yeah, wow. one of my favorite that. modes in the game, actually. I, I love it. Like, and what's funny is I'm not a big PvP person, but mm-hmm. I love Gambit. Gambit can be fun with the right people. The problem with it is that they've gutted it so badly that there's virtually nothing left. Mm-mm. So it's just kind of like, eh, you, you go in there when you have to. But there's just no substance there anymore, and that's the biggest problem with it. 
And then from there, it looks like Raul is going to be getting a vendor update and he will be getting a hype bar just like everybody else in the game. As well as we hope you held on to those exotic engrams because any new engram, you are now just going to be going to Raul and decrypting it there. No more mindlessly farming legendary lost sectors in hopes that it will drop. Just take oh. your engrams, go over there, and roll the dice. So, I, I can already tell Ryan's got some thoughts here. So <laughs> <go ahead. laughs> All right, so I'm gonna start off of the map pack. The Neo Muno one is the is is the sickest one. It looks so good. When they did the showcase and they showed the little corridors and the little mid area and all of the different you know areas where it's like you know risk reward. You can peek this, but then you might get shot by these people over here. Like it just looks so sick. Mm -hmm. um, I think PvP is is gonna be shaking up quite a bit with this, especially, you know, leading into final shape with the fact that, you know, you can use your unsigned set of weapons and there's going to be a whole bunch of people using stuff that most people won't have. A lot of those weapons probably won't come back. And even then they might take a bit. So people are, might have a weapon that might just be kind of silly. And most people, and I mean, most by like 90%, maybe more might not even own it. And it's going to be simply because you dodged Dado and didn't let him destroy your vault. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, other than that, I think it's, it's, it's going to be a real fun ride. You know, I'm really curious to see how he's feeling once that announcement showed up of like, yeah, we saw what he did on camera. Everybody saw that like scripted apology video that he did uh -huh. with his wife, literally sitting there with tears down her face. Like it, it was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. He even got the dog involved. That is crazy. Right? <laughs> crazy. That man is, I, I got to give him his props. Like credit where credit's due. Yeah. But I, I really would love to know what was going through his head when he initially read that. I, I am guaranteeing it was just a gigantic. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> a yeah, lot of people are about to be very cool. mad at me. <laughs> yeah. Dude. That other Crucible map, the one that's taking place on Europa, uh -huh. probably not the only one who has this. Whenever you see the look of it, because it has that phone white, is anybody else getting Gambler's Ruin from this? The Tangled Shore map? A little that's bit. That's the just, first thing I thought of when I saw it. Hmm. So I'm saying, like, well, here's C. Here's where the control spawns will be at. Here's where Bricks are. like, this is... I want to give them credit because I know they've been doing a lot with trying to win back the crowd with PvP. Mm -hmm. And I think this is not necessarily just a reskin, but I think this is the spiritual successor to Gambler's Ruin. Right. I mean, if you still have the assets and you just redesign it, like I don't see an issue with that because they did that in Halo all the time. Nah, and it looks like they moved everything around. Like the objective spawns are different, the heavy mm -hmm. bricks are different. Like it, it does seem like a flip because I remember everybody was in kind of an uproar about this junction saying it was just a reskin of a map from D1 when they like did the overlay and they laid like this junction over top of I think it was one of the forest maps from <laughs> SD1. They overlaid it like this is the same thing, you just put a pyramid here instead of a tree. Yeah, it's Frontier, it's a reskin of Frontier. Yeah, <gasps> okay, no, Frontier is that gotcha. really that big of a deal? Because, like, okay, like, what is what is one of the like most well known, most beloved Halo maps of all time. Mid Guardian, Blood Gulch. Oh, like I'm I'm taking it all the way back. Like Halo One, Blood Gulch. Like for God's sakes, Red versus Blue did five seasons on that map. It was subtitled the Blood Gulch Chronicles. For <laughs> yeah, the Blood Gulch Chronicles. Okay, Halo Two. It's the exact same map. Now it's called Coagulation. Yeah. Halo 3, it's called Valhalla, but it's still essentially Blood Gulch. Uh, so is it really that big of a deal? You, you no. understand. It's a it's a different audience with Destiny players. Like not everybody who plays Destiny played Halo. You can you can as a Halo you know player you can you know notice the you know culture with the developer in doing the thing that you just explained it's just that most people won't really understand it and they're going to be 
having feedback like how they have, where they're just like, dog, this is just what you did in D1. This is just what you did earlier. And it's just kind of like whack because kind of have a culture of just kind of regurgitating the same thing. So it's mm-hmm. like to avid Halo players, they can kind of get down with it. It won't bother them as much. They're, they're understanding it. But to newer players who even started with Destiny, not even just with Destiny 2, but Destiny as a whole, they won't get that. And they'll be like, I love D1. I know everything about D1, but I don't like the fact that you're just regurgitating everything from D1. You know? And what worked back then doesn't work with the new sandbox. That's exactly. The too. And I think the biggest feedback I have with that is Twilight Gap. I can't stand Twilight Gap. I, it's it's horrendous to me. Yeah, but it's a D1 map. You know? But it, it has been used in things like Trials. It has been used in things like Comp and all types of stuff. And I'm just like, why does this map still exist? Because they take maps that were designed for more of like a PvE party sense and put it in competitive settings, you know? So it, it is what it is. You know, we can understand it, but a lot of people won't. Yeah, and Lethal just put up Eventide is actually being called the Thieves Den remake. Huh. Okay. So I can I can actually see that. Like I guess I don't view it as that big of a deal because like while I like PvP in Destiny, you and I have talked about it a ton. I hate every single Destiny map. I, I hate every single one of them, even Javelin. And I know that's just sacrilege as a Destiny player. I hate Javelin. Here's why I hate them, though. I played Halo for so long, and what is the one thing about every single Halo map that ha- that has in common with each other? There's one thing that every Halo map has in common. Symmetry. Every map in Halo is a symmetrical map. If you go to one side and go to the other, it's going to be just like that over there. Destiny does not have a lot of symmetrical maps, mm-hmm. and that makes it annoying to me. Yeah, where you want to spawn flip on Javelin because, hey, I can spawn peek you on A. I can't spawn peek you from C. Mm-hmm. So and it's me, like, me. We, we're going to fight for this. We're going to fight for this one point, and now it becomes like, why do we want all three? We could just have two play advantage, and now I don't have to worry about getting shot. Yeah. Where if it was a more symmetrical map, the threat is the same no matter where you are on the map. Mm -hmm. And it's more of an even playing field. I feel like some maps do that terribly. Like, for instance, like uh, uh, Witch's Court or Cauldron, whereas, you know, you spawn on one side and you just definitely have an advantage. But I think some maps do it. Cauldron's Mercury map, right? Huh? Cauldron's Mercury. No, no Cauldron is Cauldron a moon. Is That's the moon. Moon, moon. Okay. Where the doors open when you get near it. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. If yeah. you get that, you're pretty much set. If you, yeah. <laughs> oh so my it's God. like. Especially in trials, if it's a uh, capture point and the capture point spawns there, it's like. Don't literally even last week. This. Literally <laughs> last week, it was Cauldron capture point. It was so tedious. You know, and essentially what I was going to also say was some maps do it kind of okay. The reason why Javelin is regarded as like the best PvP player map is because it's not symmetrical, but it makes sense from both sides. Because Mm -hmm. what you're getting from each side is not necessarily a downside. Like if you want to, if one side is inside, right, and they're holding point, but you're outside, you technically still kind of have an advantage when you peek through the hallway, and you know vice versa if you're outside yeah it's more space but they can come outside and force a scramble it's each particular point of the map doesn't give one particular person one particular team a massive advantage or even advantage at all so i would agree some maps do it well but some maps don't yeah and that's where i can kind of get down with the whole you might want symmetrical you know maps but I mean, I'll fully agree that for the most part, symmetry, it's it's just what I'm used to. It's just years and years and years of playing competitive Halo. Right. Yeah. Symmetrical maps means that you understand the map layout way, way better and way, way faster. Mm Because there's less to remember. Like, oh, it looks like this over here. So it's going to look like that over there. And then from there, you just have to remember weapons points. It's it's super easy. And when you played competitive, you had a coach talking in your ear every 30 seconds. Rockets in 20 seconds. 
Yeah, we know. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, like, yeah, that, that was a fun part of the tournament life in the Halo. It was just the coach in your ear while listening to the rest of the team. I think what yeah. really pushed the needle for me when it came to, you know, maps that weren't symmetrical was playing a lot of Valorant for a bit where mm-hmm. they're not symmetrical, but you can – they basically take where Bungie succeeded with Javelin and just make that with every map where they're not symmetrical, but you can have your advantages in each area and it really aren't at a disadvantage, at least as much with each map. They're very finely tuned. I think that also goes to the gameplay of Valorant, right? Yeah. Like it's it, true. it lends yeah. itself more to, to a tactical game. So it makes sense. Even if you have something asymmetric, there's there's more kind of control over that checks and balances. There's less variables of the funky stuff happening. And even mm. to Jay's point about symmetry, right? In terms of here's what the maps were in Halo. Also being a Halo player and jumping to Destiny. I think the other thing about Destiny is obviously with the sandbox and abilities and all of those other things, you all have the ability to have a power weapon. Not a heavy, but a power weapon, a sniper, a shotgun. Mm-hmm. You can have one of those right off of the bat. So I think that weighs into the benefit of peaking one side versus a choke for the other. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah, because like, in I'm Halo, not everybody there. is on ground level for the most part. you got to fight and claw for the power weapons. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, and I've said before, there, there's no way in hell you are you will ever balance the weapon pool in Destiny. There's just never. too many. It, you'll never do it. No shot. They'll bring Twilight Garrison back before they do that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, last up on Jay and Hoarder's Double Ds uh, on the Destiny side of things is Pantheon officially launched uh, this week. We're going to teach a little bit of LFG etiquette for you new lights. Matter of fact, I'm going to put the popcorn down for this one. So Pantheon is basically a raid boss rush mode. So if you wanted your first taste of raids without the full commitment of finding five other individuals and getting them all scheduled around the same time and then learning the mechanics of an entire raid. You just want to learn the mechanics of one specific part. Pantheon is here to kind of give you a hand. But as a seasoned Destiny player and as someone who has participated in about four World's First races at this point, we understand that not everybody may be the most well equipped. Me, me, and Lion and Juju, uh, even Hoarder has heard me talk about this uh, at great length. I will admit our points of view are a little jaded because if you really want to get down to the nitty gritty in Destiny Two, you're talking to three people that are in the upper one percent of this game. We run the super hard stuff. We run the raids. We have the top tier gear. We've gone flawless in trials. We have these dumbass weapons that just do everything for you. I understand not everybody's going to have those. But please, 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 if you're going to enter Pantheon, number one, be advised, this is a revamped version of the original encounter. The original encounter will be a lot easier. Pantheon will automatically start you five levels below what you're supposed to be. And each week... It's only going to get incrementally harder all the way up to the final week where it's going to be 20 levels above what you are. So you are going to get a front row seat of what it's like to run a raid in contest mode where a Kleenex will kill you if you step on it wrong. That's just how it's going to be. Pantheon is for the upper echelon of Destiny players that want that hardcore difficulty. Like, it's the one time, I guess two times in a year, that Bungie panders to the upper 1%. So if you want to do Pantheon, I encourage all of you to do it. If you do well, you get a good time, you're going to get the chance for elite adept raid weapons, something that less than 1% of the people in the game actually have. So you've got something to run for. But please, go watch some videos. That way, you at least have an idea of what you need to do in Pantheon. Each encounter is going to be different. Raids are not like the rest of the game where, like he said before, people just want to run around and shoot drags in the face. 
you're not going to be able to do that in Pantheon. Pantheon is a group effort. Everybody needs to play a role. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, I got the shotgun, though. <laughs> My brother in Christ, we're on Oryx. What you want to do with a shotgun? <laughs> you don't get the reference. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wrong. Rob is in the chat. <laughs> Get him out of here. Uh, Rob, I'm sorry. Rob and Jay, I'm sorry. I had to. I had to. <laughs> uh, oh, man. That guy is going down in history. Woo. Oh, what did I miss? So basically, we were. I got, I, I got this one. Okay, okay. I, I just needed to do this. <laughs> oh my god! Oh. Give me the Lord. You you just slapped me right in the face with that one. I was not ready. <laughs> I put my popcorn down and everything. Damn. Oh man. <laughs> Oof. Okay, so Root of Nightmares, Race the World's First. It is day two. We're all running ragged. Three team members have already like fallen by the wayside. So me, Rob, Ryan, and I think we brought in Obi, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes, yes. So we head to LFG for the remaining two people. Uh, we're on planets, and we get this guy who actively argues with us over his power level at first. Like, we're looking right at his power level, and it's like, you're not up to level. And he just kept swearing up and down that he was. But we can see it. You're not. <laughs> but we choose to just let it rock, and we start talking weapons and setup and all this type of stuff. This guy has nothing. Just absolutely nothing. Nothing. But I got the shotgun, though. That was his response to everything. But I got this shotgun. On planets? I don't think we said much after that. We just kicked him out of the corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have that was it. Why, why are you in shotgun range on planets? Why do you, oh. why do you have a shotgun? Oh, man. Man. Dude. Oh. Yeah. For, for those of like you that are latest. not like, Wondering, like, why are these idiots laughing so hard? We forgive you, number one. <laughs> yeah. Facts. Number two, pray you never have to deal with what we had to deal with. <laughs> yeah, dude. It, and I only really said that because of what Jay was saying when it came to having to remind yourself that you are the top 1% of players and that there are just certain players, many players, who don't understand the game at the level that you do or have even the slightest bit of things that you do and they will pull up to a raid with like yo man i got this you know big giant shotgun which you know what i'm saying i'm good I'm, i can do this i can do this man it's like all right brother we, we appreciate your enthusiasm <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah <laughs> full transparency you can ask questions just don't question what somebody is doing if they've clearly been here before. Yeah. <laughs> if you didn't uh -huh. read the Twitch, if you didn't, at the time, if you didn't read the TWAB, that's on you. Ryan, Jay, you'll remember this one. Do you remember the night we lfg to farm Oryx? I think I do. I do. <laughs> we, we, we had five. We only needed one more. I think I LFG this. for the last spot. I'm running Insidious because Arc Knight show up, Ogre shows up. I'm good. I'm using a linear for damage because it's Oryx. We got a well. And at the time, Particle Deconstruction was out of the game, but Cataclysmic was still putting in work. This man with his entire chest asked, what do you even need Arbalest for? Why don't you just run an exotic? Like, you need the damage. This man... Never read the part of the twid where they explain, like, hey, we fixed anti-barrier. If it has any part, it will go through taken shields and hive shields. It will pierce. 
We know that was a bug. It's been fixed. I'm over here cooking everything. He's like, my night's still up. My night's still up. And I'm like, he's using a primary on a night. I'm one shotting them. And he's over here. He's like, I, I didn't need that much help. I'm like, you the sure? Number say otherwise. <laughs> you, you, sure? you didn't need that much help. This man argued with me back and forth. And I was like, all right, scrub it. Let's wipe for damage. Last on the list. You can ask me why or what's your thought process behind the loadout. Don't ask me why as in why are you not doing this? And you are the lowest in damage. <laughs> I, I try not to be that guy, but please don't do it. And you have better gear than me. You have the adept, so you know what to do. Yeah. You just don't. All and right. After that one, I can I could feel Jay holding back his like I could run like <laughs> If I say anything now, I'm going to violate terms of service. He was like, Drew, don't. He messaged me and she was like, I, are you going to? I'm like, I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying to, be <laughs> you good? to be the shepherd. <laughs> oh, man. Must have been a night that I wasn't there because I don't remember that. I yeah. I feel like I would have said something. I told you about it afterwards because I'm just kind of like the one time you had to work. I'm so mad. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I'm like, don't leave me alone with this guy. See all the fun shit you miss, Porter? <laughs> 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 oh, right. man. Hopefully everybody is still awake. I've already taken the hat off. So it is time to move on to the next subject. And we are going to move this one up just a little bit because, Porter, once again, you're, you're always so polite. You always just wait your turn and everything. I want you to feel more included on this. So we are going to skip over to Sony Stumbles again. Stellar Blade and Helldiver 2. Yes. Now, Stellar Blade, I, I won't lie. I haven't followed that too much. I know there was a whole censorship thing that happened. But I'm well acquainted with what happened to Helldivers 2. Yes. So why don't you go ahead and take it away? <laughs> Okay, so for me, the censorship thing with Stellar Blade was not a big issue. I'll be honest. Um, I played the demo. I played the demo like three times. I thought it was a lot of fun. <laughs> one one thing that someone said on Twitter, I, I don't remember their name, but they said, and I fully agree with this, it is a game where the parry and the block mechanic is like the most satisfying of any Souls-like type of game. Or like Ooh. even if you compare it to like Jedi Fallen Order, Jedi Survivor, that's what I would say. It's actually more likes uh, than a Soulsborne, to be honest with you. Although those two games did have those elements in them, you know. Um, I really like it a lot. I actually bought the game. I've been streaming it. I'm like twenty some hours in. It's an incredibly long game with a ton of side missions, uh, but people were upset because of slight alterations in the outfits and then you know i guess the dev wasn't sure what exactly to say at the time and recently the devs uh, one of the devs actually said or uh, they liked a tweet that said some of the outfits are actually not as revealing uh and those are really great outfits for eve and they liked that tweet so mm -hmm. i don't know exactly where they're at on it but i do think that that was like way wild and there was someone by the name of i don't even want to say the name here but i think i need to grums that uh oh, basically um kind of built all this against uh the whole thing you know to make it much to make a a uh, mountain out of a molehill basically so the whole controversy over this game getting censored was She's too sexy. Yeah, that was a big part of it. But then there was also an outfit that was perhaps a little too revealing, and they got very upset when that was edited. People really need to grow up. Touch grass. Mm -hmm. I believe he's nearly 60, too. Like, I mean, I'm old. I'm 47, but I think Grum's like 59 or something. Oh, well, I don't know. Like, like that much older than me. Wow. Yeah. I, <laughs> Twitch elderly is the term I like to use. <laughs> you do not look 47, brother. Well, thank you yeah, very much. <laughs> like that that's not even a go touch grass moment. That's a go seek therapy <laughs> moment. Fine God. 
Yes. Yeah, find something you yes. subscribe to other than other blue check marks. Basically. Mm-mm-mm. They were it's crazy. They were mad. They thought that was default. I'm like, no, that's a challenge mode run. You put that on or well, use that. You you get one shot. Like that is not like beginning of the game. You running around. Wait, so there's, there's a point naked. to the suit. It's yeah. basically like doing Soulsborne naked. Yeah, apparently the whole like the damn near naked Eve outfit that everybody was pissed about. That is one that you unlock, and that is basically hey. You move faster, you attack faster, but you do not take hits well. You use yeah. this basically, you're, you're getting one shot. You're sacrificing, similar Soulsborne, you're sacrificing your armor and your defense speed. Kill before you're killed. You almost have no armor. Now, what's funny is the outfit I'm trying to <laughs> find right now, it's like a leather, co- not a leather, it's like a, a black coat with like a fur trim for the collar. And mm. it's like on the screen when I'm loading the game in. And I'm like, that's really cool. Where is that? Um, but like, I really found a number of really cool outfits that are uh, definitely more modest, we'll say. But they're, you know, uh, sexy. I guess I would use the term sexy. You know, they're just not in your face, if that makes sense. I don't they're know. not sexy. Yeah, it's not <laughs> like, yeah. Nobody knows what it means, but it's provocative. <laughs> yeah, somewhat provocative. <laughs> slightly, slightly provocative, we'll say, yeah. So, like, I all right, I guess I don't understand, like, the uproar about this. Like, games like Elden Ring, Bloodborne, even Demon Souls. All Souls, Soulsborne type games, you can basically set yourself up to where you are walking around, balls out, boobs out, however you want. <laughs> and nobody said anything about those. Why is Convenient it such a big targets. deal now? Convenience. <sighs> As only yeah, thing, this just, looks like something we can we can make an argument about. Why not go for it? But you know how it goes. People who play games complain about games they don't play. That's true. That's true. A lot of the biggest complainers of Suicide Squad have never touched it and haven't played the the beta, any of it. Like, yeah. It's a lot of people who do that. They just don't even turn it on, don't even go to options, and they're just like, this is this and that's that. It's like, okay. Even... Now, yeah. if the game is Walking Dead Destinies, I get it. Like, if that's the if that's the game, you've seen some of the gameplay from that or something, and you're like, oh, that's terrible looking. It really does look quite bad. Um, but like, you know, we're, we're not talking about you know something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right, and there's I'm moments where like that game ever again. <laughs> I was just saying, it proved this like, point. You, you thought I missed point. it. I did. It proved this point. <laughs> Which game? I got to know. I said, but you said games, you certain. you said a particular game that you don't have to turn on to really just know it's garbage. And I said Metal Gear Survive. No, we, oh, that was so disappointing. We don't talk about that game. We don't. That game does not exist. Does not. Ever. No, Mm-mm. I refuse. <laughs> yeah, I think there's multiple times we can look to something like there's a difference between there's a difference in the criticism, right? There's a difference of somebody being very deep into a certain genre, right? Like for Marshall us, we all shot. play we <laughs> all play looter shooters, like we've all known. So for us to see something that's similar or looks like it and say, "I see what they're going for, but this isn't for me." or I'm cautious about it, that's one thing. Like, it's very, very rare that we, and I use all four of us as an example, we will see a game and write it off as trash from the first look. Now, there are certain mechanics we can see in gameplay. We're like, "Mm, I don't know about that. But you gotta gotta really swing in a miss for us to be like, yo, this is ass. And we haven't touched it yet. Like we're only yeah. if, if it's not passing the eye test, we can say mm-hmm. it's not passing the eye test. But this could play great, right? Mm-hmm. Right. The, like the there, problem it's is not that, a whole lot that that happens. The problem is extreme negativity gets all the clicks. So basically, oh, yeah. on the internet, it's like this game, this movie, this TV show. It's the worst thing that's ever existed, or it's a gift from God Himself. Like it is just that's what it is. It's like the most terrible thing or the best. There's no nuance. There's no like I think it's pretty good. Oh, you hate it? No, I 
thought it was pretty good, you know? That, that, that was one of the things that just irritated me the most back in the Avengers days. It's just like, guys, it's okay to like a game and still be critical about it. But if you said anything negative, you immediately just got dogpiled and it's just like, fuck it. <laughs> yeah. You don't I even play this. this. No <laughs> but all right. So, do you want me to cover the other uh, thing? Yeah. Okay. So, so I, I got to be real. The the Stellar Blade thing honestly astonishes me. I know. Me too. I'm not going to play it unless Marshall threatens to gift it to me. <laughs> Marshall, so, like, run. <laughs> at the end of the day, like, I, I have always been of the mindset, like, number one, like, scantily clad, skimpy video game women do absolutely nothing for me. Like, I'm not going to be able to do anything with that character. The closest you're going to get is to print out a picture of them and then cut a hole somewhere and do your thing. That's the closest you're ever going to get. I'm sorry. If people want to look at boobs, go look at boobs. People want to go look at penis, go look at penis. Like, whatever makes you happy, you know, as long as it's legal. Why Why do we got to censor that? But, like, back in the day, like, Dante's Inferno, final boss of that game, literally has a dick that's just dragging the floor as he's chasing after you. <laughs> Dang. Nobody said anything about that. <laughs> They let that rock. I just let I, I am I am of the mindset of like whatever your vision was originally with your game, let it rock, whether it be censored, uncensored, let it rock. The the ranking, the rating system on a video game is there for a reason. Like if people are too stupid to not read the rating and get offended by boobs, that's on them, not you. You let your art stand as is. Like yeah, that that's really all I got to say. Like, this game I, is I too much gore. Necessary. I love it, especially when the developers come in there. Like, this has too much of this. This has too much of that. I don't like this. I'm like, have you gone to the options? You can change that. <laughs> like, I, I love when they do that. It's kind of like that. That's a setting that can you can just turn yeah, that you off. Can turn that off. <laughs> mm-hmm. Exactly. And somebody that's mad that clearly has not played the game or spent enough time with it to know that that is a thing. I think that's actually the first thing I look at when I start games up now are options because I'm like, if there's screen shake or if there's like a color green and something, if I can do that, I'm I'm gonna say because most of the time I'm gonna be here for a couple hours. I'm not trying to get a headache by the second mission or the second quest. I'm not trying to deal with all that. Yeah. But all right. So we already saw one stumble with Sony. <laughs> Let's go ahead and move on to the other one. Sony in their infinite wisdom. Now, in Sony's defense. They said right from the get-go that this was going to be a thing. Mm -hmm. But, and I feel Sadat the Gamer brought up a fantastic point last night on the After Show podcast. What Mm -hmm. about the people that do not have access to Mm -hmm. PlayStation Network? So Helldivers is rolling out an update that is going to require you, if you are playing on Steam, to link to a PlayStation Network account. You don't have to spend any money or anything like that. You just go to the PlayStation website, make an account. Two seconds, boom, you're done. You link it when you log in. Everything's copacetic. This is not new. When you get into Suicide Squad, you have to sign into your WB account. When you get on Mortal Kombat 1, you have to sign into your WB account. When you get on Destiny, you have to sign into your Bungie account. Unless you have it set up automatically. Um, What else? Halo, you got to sign into your Microsoft account. Fallout, you got to sign yep. into a Microsoft account. This Apex, is not a new EA. practice. Yeah. yeah. This is not a new practice at all. Cap, uh, Street Fighter, you got to log into Capcom ID. Like, mm-hmm. it, this mm-hmm. is not a new practice. But the amount of people that just immediately went on a flame war. Now, the people 
that like in certain countries have no access to PlayStation Network. Over a hundred countries, a lot of Europe. Yeah, that is absolutely insane. Yes, it is. So far, they, t- they so Sony even took it off their uh, PlayStation Store or whatever <laughs> online, so you don't even have access in those. I believe it's a hundred and seventeen countries total. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely crazy. Um, and then, uh, basically, they made. Arrowhead be the ones to try to deliver this information on Friday. And apparently, I guess Arrowhead knew this was coming, but I think they were hoping to try to fight against it or something. I'm mm-hmm. not exactly sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And now it's gotten to the point, and see, this gets complicated too, because there's a lot of different things that have happened this weekend over it. Arrowhead has now at the point where they're actually kind of telling their fans to uh, review bomb Helldivers 2. I saw that. And then they went so far as later today uh, to say, oh, wow, it seems people are uh, review bombing Helldivers as well, the first one. And they're like, what's next? What if you uh, help uh, review bombing these two other Sony games? Like, uh, like I believe it's Plystelt, uh, or Plystat, uh, who said that in a tweet. Yeah. So it's like now encouraging to keep it going. So to see what Sony will do. Now, this is going to be very interesting because I think that Sony, okay, being the massive company they are, the massive corporation, I think they would sooner sever ties with Arrowhead and this game then change their rules because I would so have mean. to agree. Like yeah. I see them giving Arrowhead the boot before doing anything else. Because right. uh, now, especially too, uh, they could be like, "Wait a minute!" So Arrowhead is going and fueling this uh, review bombing. You know, from a professional standpoint, Sony could be like, "This isn't worth the heart." The, you know, the headaches right now. So I could see someone high up, like at Sony, being like, "Yeah, we're done here." I, I don't know. You know, this is a really weird situation. What's funny is, to me, I actually mentioned before that if anything causes this game to fail, it would be Sony. And that's not because I'm anti- anti-Sony. I love PlayStation. But here's the thing. A massive corporation gets a giant hit like that, whether it's TV, movies, games, whatever it is, they are going to try to squeeze as much money out of it. No. And what I thought they were going to do is go immediately for incredibly egregious monetization. Not like the war bonds are there right now, but they would just go nuts with it and be like, well, you can't stop us. You know, we're the publisher here or we're the partner here. That's where yeah. I thought it would go. I didn't think it would be a situation going against countries that do not have PSN. Absolutely insane. And it's, you really got to wonder what Sony is trying to do with hell divers at this point, because yeah, they, they are notorious for aggressive monetization and hell divers just hell divers. is just live service done. Right. Yes. Like, it you is. can pay for things yeah. if you want, but if you don't, there are ways to get it in the game and it's mm-hmm. just, it's a perfect model. So I really don't see what Sony has to gain with enforcing this. I I just, I really don't. It just seems really stupid on their part. I don't either. And then also too, it's the thing that like, um, this game has done so well as a live service because they have taken the storytelling aspect of the game and mixed it with marketing. Mm -hmm. So basically they are in character as someone from super earth in their tweets. And they're talking about awesome drops of new, like gear, new, like mechs and stuff like this those are in the game right now go ahead and save these planets it's not a build-up for two or three weeks or a month before this drops it's right away and that basically becomes the story of the game and how things are moving in the game and that's crazy that is i think crazy. my favorite one from them so far was like i think the player base failed a major order and they basically said that no uh, Hell Divers two players were allowed to have sex for the next. Yes, like what? That was the funniest thing on earth. That any application for a procreation license would immediately be denied is, yes. I think, what they said in the tweet. Mm-hmm. Absolutely hilarious. And it's crazy because it's like 
whenever you see something that's so clearly one-sided from the other, because obviously Arrowhead has done their research, they've learned from so many previous mistakes that other live service games have made. Yes. And they found out like this is what we need to do instead. Crossplay. We want this from the jump and we want this to work with everything. You got it on Xbox, you got it on PlayStation, you got it on Steam. You can play together and there's not going to be a whole lot of hoops you got to jump through. Just use the in game invite. And that did get, take a little while to get fixed, but it was always like, we want you guys to play together. We want you to enjoy this. Same thing with the mechs are like, y'all want them? They're in the game. We're not yes. unlocking them yet. However, if you reach this, go ahead and do it. If you cook, we will let you eat. It, it's that simple. And we've seen that happen, you know, with other live service games where it's not as cut and dry. It's not as clear in goal as possible. And not to jump back just to a previous topic, but we, we've seen those kind of things with, you know, Destiny, trying out live events, trying out different things with the community. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it swings oh, so heavily. Season of the Worthy, it swings so heavily in one pendulum where they're just like, are we that out of touch? No, it's the players who are wrong. Where they <laughs> had to walk it back, and they're like, "No, we didn't want you guys to fail Seraph Towers. We had no many. We had no idea that many of you just said straight up, we're not doing this." Yeah, that that was one of the wildest things about Destiny Two was Season of the Worthy. Season of the Worthy was one of the biggest moments in Destiny where I just flat out refused to play. I yeah. just did not want to do it because. Tying everything to the season to a public event where it is always going to be a dice roll as to whether or not anyone's going to be there to help you. Yeah. The community literally mm -hmm. rose as one and just went, No, we're not doing oh, this. Oh, yeah. The and it wasn't game. just that this Bungie is hard. Doors. <laughs> we're used to doing hard content. We've been running the higher level nightfalls and doing all that. We were used to hard content, it didn't work. Not just the execution was off. The, it literally did not function as it was supposed to. Mm -hmm. Teleporting enemies. And it was a very, very low margin for error. Like if one enemy got to that plate, you were not getting the drops you need to finish doing that tower. Not in enough time. Um, server stability was a huge thing. People were getting error coded left and right. It was called Season of the Beaver. That was yep. the nickname of it. I remember that. Anything you were getting sent to orbit. And it's like a lot of it was things that you couldn't replicate because you don't know what actually caused it. And a lot of stuff just wasn't your fault. So if you have stuff where it's like, hey, we're not playing this, not just because we don't like it, this could be really good. The state of the game, the technical state, this does not function. This is why we're not doing it. And for us to have to wait for something that was already announced, already shown, you know, as part of the reveal, as part of the roadmap, and now we have to do this to unlock it. Like, I, that was the first time, I think, as long as I've been playing Destiny, I'd gotten into it in Forsaken. Charlie, when Forsaken really hit, like, the PSN, uh, when they hit the PSN store, when they made a big push for it, because the mm -hmm. base game was free to play. That was the first time I heard Bungie saying, no, this is not, this was not part of the plan. We did not want you guys to fail the event. Like, there were think pieces. Like, every content creator was making, like, do they want us to fail? We're not going to hit this thing. Like somebody yeah, no. did the math and it was kind of like, if all of us contributed to this with the way the current game is now, or the current, they use like steam charts, the PlayStation charts, everything like all of us doing this, we would not unlock this in time. Like before the season ends. That's wild. Wow. But yeah, it was like all equivalent of a couple million completions, like full completions. Yeah. But all in all, uh, swinging back over to hell divers. Like I really hope Arrowhead can figure out a way to make things Okay. Yeah, I'm yeah. Hoping even that, if I'm hoping that Sony basically decides to change your mind. Uh, I don't know what the other answer is because here's the issue: uh, the countries where PSN is not available, that may not just be a Sony thing. That might be the country itself doesn't yeah. allow for some reason that type of account to be made, or maybe they've had issues with Sony security. That's mm -hmm. an issue, and that's a legitimate issue too. Some people don't want to create a PSN account because of security issues issues with the PSN accounts. So I totally get that. Uh, but the, I, my heart really does go out though that people like who actually bought the game and technically can't play it now because, you know, 117 countries worth can't have PSN codes. Yeah. And you know, something's huge when Steam is accepting refunds for anything, 
regardless of playtime. Yes. Right. Like, that should really mm-hmm. tell you something. Because they were sure I'm like, you have had access to this game, and now that you you quite literally cannot play it, like we're not even gonna like argue with you about this. Yeah. Like, yeah. What where do you live again? Oh, say less. We got you. Mm-hmm. Like Steam, Steam is out there doing the Lord's work right now. And one of the reasons we have to kind of I don't want to say like make this like into this huge like uh <laughs> like thing that we have to fight for or something but it's important that we that people do speak out about this because remember i think it was the guy from ubisoft who like floated the idea of like i don't think people should be able to own games like the yeah. idea of like partnership at that point <laughs> yeah yeah so like i thought that was a really wild thing but here's the thing a lot of those big executives will say wild things like that. It's like sometimes they don't even think it out and they'll say it out loud. Um, but like, yeah, that's the thing, though. A corporation I could totally see if this was OK and no one reacted to it. Sure. More and more are going to be doing it. Yeah, it, it just goes to show just how to how out of touch of reality a lot of these higher up executives actually are. And I mean, well, let, let's be fair. The. uh the head of U- Ubisoft has always been questionable as to whether or not he's aware he's on planet Earth. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Like, he, he has always had that pretty much plastered on his forehead, but he made some good games. So, like, we rocked with him, like our goofy but, you know, certifiable uncle. Like, yeah. it's just how it rolled. But when he said that, I was just like, wait a minute. It's... It's kind of like uh, how I felt with uh, X Defiant. I've been waiting for that to come out. When it came uh, out before the beta, I was really into it. I was like, yo, this feels really good. Da, 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 da. But then they recently had a server test. And it was like, I found out. I was like, all right, let me download it instantly. And it was just like, as I'm playing the first game I'm jumping into, I remember what he said. And I was like, I am really not interested in this game anymore. I'm really not. Because it's like... I don't need it. It's like, and at the same time, I also don't like the direction that they're going. You know, like what he said really was garbage. And I was like, I I turned it off instantly. I I legit played one game and I turned it off. I uninstalled it. I I haven't purchased a product, but I'm still under NDA. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to get Star Wars Outlaws. I've wanted a game that was a AAA experience as a scoundrel or smuggler for years. Mm. Not a not a Jedi. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to be picking that up. Plus, apparently, the main dev behind that is uh, was from the division, so the game could be just absolutely awesome. Okay, they got somebody from Massive that's on that. Yes, I don't know if it was Division 1 or 2, but it was one of the main people. Also, here's something wild. Axel Ridby, uh, Rocksteady, so Suicide Squad killed the Justice League, he was part of the Division team as well at one point. This all makes so much sense now. Mm. (laughs) But all right, we are, yeah, we're rolling close to two hours here so let's pick up the pace a little so next up on the docket will be and we're going to kind of keep this one a little short and sweet because it's not really a round table discussion thing it's just more of a <laughs> look how dumb twitch is thing and that is evo japan um, oh yeah evo japan was this past weekend uh i did not get to see a lot of it because well there is a 23 hour time difference <laughs> So didn't get to watch a lot. So uh, we we had to uh, get the button check version of it. And um, yeah, apparently day one, Twitch just banned all the tournament pages. Mm-hmm. Now, apparently what? They were up the very next day? They were up the next day. They were restored. It was, it was a couple of hours, but they were restored, I think, by next morning, local Japan time, which for us was, you know, again, going to be middle of the night. Right. Um, but I remember even Rick was like, we're still, you know, sorry to everyone that's affected on Twitch. We're still live on YouTube. You can still watch the show. Yeah. But it's like all of their Twitch channels got immediately smoked. And wow. I don't know... What the root cause of that? A login issue or something? Or I think so. Moderation. 
Yeah, for like, there's no mods on the channel, so we're not letting. But I also think that a big issue with this, and Twitch has had this issue for a while, along with some of the other like larger platform sites for things like this, is that it's not humans doing the moderation, right? Like, there's algorithms, and there's like, there's essentially like high level auto mod that gets used for these things, and you can kind of tell when somebody it's just something hit a filter. And it passed or failed that check as opposed to just somebody looking like this is different, but this is fine, and here's why. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember hearing it was something about like an ad kind of thing that tripped Twitch's, you know, band sensor or something like that. So it could be related to a massively automated stream where maybe certain things were placed in a specific way, but mm -hmm. Twitch did not agree with it and it wasn't a human person dealing with it manually. So maybe it kind of did something where they ended up getting banned. But thankfully, you know, they got it back under control. They got their channels back and things like that. But that's probably just the gist of what might have happened. Yeah, just yeah. just another shining example that Twitch really needs to get their shit together. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, it probably just failed the spot check. Be real with you. Hey, <laughs> your accounts are based in X, Y, and Z, but you've been streaming from this location in this like language for X amount of hours. What the hell's going on? Yeah, right. But you think like I know for a fact I've spoken with Rick about this uh, previously, kind of even before. It's like every time we're doing like a big show, like we you know we taught them to make sure everything's on the up and up. So I really do think it was a case of just something with the auto mod like going off and just like something just didn't pass the balance check. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, other than the funny, haha, what what a dumbass Twitch is. Uh, situation with Evo Japan. We also had quite a few reveals. Mm -hmm. um, I believe we had more spotlight put on City of the Wolves, the follow-up to the coveted Fatal Fury Garo Mark of the Wolves. Oh, and that one. we got the introduction of uh, Marco Rodriguez. My guy is back, uh, Unless baby. you played the game over here in America, you would know him better as Kushnu, but... Still don't know why to this day they named him Kush Nude Butt, but he's canonically actually named Marco Rodriguez. Um, I don't remember. Did they announce something else for Guilty Gear Strive? Uh, I think another pack and Slayer. Got oh, that's right. They announced Slayer. Um, shit, I did not. Oh, the tag. Uh, the tag game mode for Strive. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Damn, they I, said I, it's I announced. We'll have more player, about it. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, with Tekken 7, they gave us the Season 1 trailer, which showed the reveal of the next upcoming character after Eddie Gordo, uh, which I am about to put up on stream right about now, and then I will have something for the Capcom guy over there. Right after the Tekken video. <laughs> so let's go ahead and check out the, the Season 1 trailer for Tekken 8. And we're going to turn the volume up on this because Tekken trailers are hype. They definitely oh, are. Especially with that song. Jesus, I love this song.
Yeah, that trailer actually brought a tear to my eye. My God. That trailer was sick. Yeah. <laughs> for for you casuals the out there, you basically just got a ringside seat of why we travel and fight. Like, there is nothing like an in-person tournament. Yeah. Mr. Oh, Mr. welcome Mr. back to Swedish yeah. Prime Minister Lydia. We get to pay for her twice. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to us for free. If you DLC in two straight games, I'm sorry. Bruh, yeah. <laughs> like, how do you wind up being DLC twice? Like, come on. I thought it was going to... I say this with full transparency. If they show us fucking Rom, I'm buying them. I'm... I dog, I'm a Tekken player. Tekken I'm a Tekken player. <laughs> I'm a Tekken player. I don't care. Fucking Rom... Listen, I know legit was saying something in the chat talking about him switching from Street Fighter 6 to Tekken. I said no, but if Falcon Rom comes back or Bruce comes back, I'm in there. Sorry. I need it. I, I, I need, need it. it. I need it. I need it. He's probably not coming back. Not after Tekken 7. I, uh. Dog, he was so cool. Dog. I think the new stage looks oh, awesome, geez. and it's awesome that they continue the story. That's very cool. Usually fighting games uh, with the season stuff, it's the story's just done, you know, when you're done with the main campaign you know yeah that's absolutely insane like tekken has never done a story extension we've before. never like, gotten little combat has done it once but never tekken like we didn't get full-fledged tekken stories until like tekken 6 and mm -hmm. even then tekken 6 like the story mode was like tekken force mode yeah that's, the scenario that's pretty much all it was. <laughs> like, like even with seven tekken. huh like even with seven it wasn't the case i'm like Hey, there are more character episodes. These aren't done yet. They're coming out, but they aren't done yet. And they just kept it 100 was. But we didn't get, like, an extension of, like, what happened after we'd already, like, played through the main story. Yeah, and the, the story for Tekken 7 was, like, it was a good first effort is how mm -hmm. I would put it. Like, yeah, the story is interesting, but, like, you're doing this all from the perspective of, like, some random reporter that has no name. You have no backstory on him whatsoever. Yeah. But, like, like Tekken 8 story just straight straight up puts you in the shoes of Jin and the rest of the Mishima family so you can really see how this happens on ground level and I was just so unbelievably impressed with it that the fact that they're doing an addition to it that's clearly going to involve copious amounts of Eddie Gordo man Eddie, Eddie fans are eating good right now I, I definitely got to say that I agree the one thing I do really want to point out though that I think could potentially be fertile soil for content the online ghost versus ghost battle hmm. like if somebody thinks they're better than somebody else now you can put your money where your mouth is if the schedules never align all right fine we can't we can't find like a good spot to like okay i'm free this day you're free this day okay the the schedules just don't mesh tekken 8's ghost system is really unparalleled. Like it, it's absolutely amazing. It can mm. constantly compiles data on your fights and models the ghost almost blow for blow based on your active play style. <laughs> so if the schedules don't mess, fine. You can go fight my ghost. Or okay, I can't bar all right, my ghost will fight your ghost. That just screams potential. That's so right sick. I yeah. wish you thought I had that. This is one of those AI for good moments. Like this, this is the kind of AI we, we will rock with. This is this is a good use of it. Yeah. But I can also see because we all for those of you who don't attend the other tournament classic, yeah, for sure, man. We'll play. That's Thursday night. You don't see each other till Sunday when everybody's heading to the airport. <laughs> so that's why, hey man, uh, when I get home, just put your ghost data up. We'll settle it there. Yeah, you you can totally do that. Like God, I've lost count how many times like asking people, hey, you want to play when we get home? Oh, yeah. And then you just never talk to them or you reach out and they just never respond. Now, like big tip of the hat to Tekken 8 where you're like, man, I want to I want to get games against Punko or I want to get games against me. I, I really want to play against Arslan Ash, the back to back Tekken Evo winner. Now you got a chance to actually do it. It yeah, may not be them per se, but it's going to be blow for blow their fighting style. And, and you can learn from them, like, here's how I adjust to this kind of pressure, or this kind mm -hmm. of play style. It, it's tangible feedback. But I already know what I'm using that photo mode for. How the hell did this hit me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 
immediately. Upcoming Primecast segment. How the hell did this hit me? Featuring Juju the Maestro. <laughs> <laughs> James, we aren't biting your is it going to kill. We just want to know, is it going to hit? <laughs> But all right, let, let's go ahead and, and pander to the Capcom fans. I, I got to admit, like, uh, I was a little harsh on Street Fighter Six. Street Fighter Six has been doing incredibly well. And the character so many people have been waiting for is finally arriving. Ladies and gentlemen, Akuma. Oh. Look I got so much boy. to say. Where will this path of strife take him? To the morgue, most likely. I stand by my statement. Did he just pee his pants? Wasted. <laughs> Damn, landed on his head. On his head. I mean, Alpha Blood. Okay, the God, the stage looks so good. Yeah, so the stage looks so good. Jesus. Witness the abyss before you. His ass have an ass. Ha 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 Mm. Oh, oh, you can faint mm. demon flip now. I've watched this like a thousand times. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sick. Can I rush up over him? Okay. I was afraid of that. What are you doing? Oh, that was the classic. Yes, he's dead. He's, he's very dead. Very dead. He's gonna be even more dead. Damn! Damn, Eco. That was a hell of a trailer. Oh! Okay. All right. All right. Giving credit where credit is due. Capcom, that was the best looking raging demon demon I have ever seen. <laughs> like, yeah, buddy. Like that was like Baku, uh, Byakuya from Bleach, just going Bankai <laughs> and just dropping the blade and just the cyclone of swords appearing. Like Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> All right, like, where, where is it? But there, there's one thing we definitely got to talk about for a second. And that is just... Akuma just casually shoryuking a child. <laughs> well, man, World Tour guy be getting himself in trouble he really has no business being in. He, he, he be trying to go into people's you know, safe spaces. What are you doing there? What are you doing there? Literally. How did you get here? How did you get here? I mean, that would be a million dollar question, being that Akuma routinely lives out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> like, my man is on an island because he destroyed the one next to it. Yeah. And he you routinely know, destroys them. Submarines and shit. He routinely destroys them with his bare hands. And you decided to pull up to try and ask him to be your master? Nah. <laughs> what are you doing? If that works, he's like, all right, bet. Go catch this body. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, 
I know that loyalty quest got to be crazy to get his what is it his uh reputation meter up. Uh, I wouldn't know. I never finished World Tour. I got I so haven't bored. Even, <laughs> I haven't. Even I didn't either. It. I did it enough to get the costumes while the season pass was bugged. Yeah, fair enough. I got it though. So, Hoarder, have we converted you to a fighting game player yet? <laughs> well, I've always enjoyed the uh, Street Fighter series uh, oh, yeah. and Mortal Kombat. Um, that's an excellent trailer. That's very cool that they got Akuma in because that's a character I do like quite a bit. Um, so, yeah, I've always liked fighting games. I'm just terrible at them. Like, no matter how much time or effort I put into it, I, I really don't get better. So I always on the fence about getting them. Like I ended up getting MK1 on a very inexpensive pricing, um, mm. but like uh, I've not played it yet. So I, I also mean, nothing love... else play for the story mode because story mode will always be top tier. <laughs> oh yeah, I love what they did with the art direction here because it's super subtle, but they really leaned into like he's more savage, like he's yeah. fully consumed by the dark Kado here, just yeah. in his animations. Like when he did his target combo, obviously it's supposed to be like a plexus strike or like going towards the face, but he's not using his fist. His hand is fully extended like that. It's like, no, I'm going to kill you. Like I'm going to crush your throat with this. Right. Almost like, like an evil Blanca. So, you know, very like, very yeah, like ever since and... Street Fighter 5, they've really been accentuating the beard. Like, he is kind of all over the place now. I'm and another so cool thing, Blanca. another cool thing they did with Akuma in this game is they really accentuated upon the dynamic between him and Ryu. Mm -hmm. So, one person who pointed this out with me was Tega in the sense that. Akuma and a Ryu have similar moves. So they're both their level twos have the same startup animation where they're holding an orb. One being the power of nothingness, which is just regular blue, you know, Hado and the Satsui no Hado. And the same thing being their Shinshoryuken animations. And mm -hmm. it's basically the dynamic of what Ryu could have been if he would let the Satsui no Hado take over and vice versa. It, they really leaned into that really, really well with Akuma, as well as a bunch of other things. As a character, I feel like Akuma is going to be massively busted. One thing oh, yeah. that Akuma has always had. And this was debunked, but one thing I always thought was going to be crazy about Akuma in Street Fighter 6 was that he was going to have normal health because they did away with health values in Street Fighter 6. Every character has 1,000 health or mm -hmm. 10,000 in this you know example. But I was like, yo, they're going to put Akuma in the game with all his offensive options and 10,000 health? They recently came out and said, no, after the play tests in Japan, which were not recorded, he has 9,000 health. So they're keeping up with that tradition. He's the only character in the game with less than normal health. Rightfully so, because... <laughs> he can take it away very, very fast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, so, yeah, he looks really, really good. He looks very strong, honestly. Yeah. I love how some uh, like, of I'm definitely looking forward throwbacks. to watching people play with him. I don't like I I'm way too deep. Like I I've hit that new curve in Mortal Kombat and I'm waiting to assess the damage in Tekken on Tuesday. But I'll definitely be watching people play Akuma because like Akuma's just hype to watch. He always does. I'm gonna try him out. I've tried Akuma in every game. I've only really played him in four and third strike. Those are the only two that I really like main him. It's but probably gonna be the first game, yeah. All right, it is time to bring it home for the night. Uh, I may be alone on this island, but routinely I, right I tend to suffer through and watch things, so everybody <laughs> else doesn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the Knuckles miniseries that is supposed to lead up to Sonic 3, or as the title states, a.k.a. the Wade Whipple Show. Now, for those of you wondering, who the hell's Wade Whipple? you are well within your rights to ask that question because that is the exact same question I asked. I was like, who the hell is Wade Whipple? And apparently Wade has been in both the Sonic movies and this show just kind of revolves around him. And that's where things go wrong. The show revolves around him and not Knuckles. Knuckles is the side piece in his own show. And it just makes no sense. Makes no I'm confused. Sense. Yeah. You said Wade Whipple plays Knuckles? No, Wade Whipple is like Knuckles' best friend. But the show is called Knuckles. Yeah. 
what? <laughs> yeah. See? See? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so to give a very, very quick synopsis, uh, Knuckles is having difficulty adjusting to life on Earth. Uh, Sonic and Tails are in the show for a whole rollicking five minutes. Uh, and then for the remainder of the episode, it cuts over to Wade Whipple, who was what uh, I think his name was James Marsden, uh, the sheriff in the original movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so Wade was like his deputy. And he's trying to practice for a bowling tournament. And that's the extent of what we know about him. Apparently his dad is just, just world famous bowler and he just runs into Knuckles and Knuckles gets kidnapped and then Wade tries to rescue him and then Knuckles rescues the both of them and then they go to Reno for a bowling tournament. I just explained the whole show. That's all. Oh, you're dead ass. I am dead ass. So it's it, it's so it's a road trip, basically, <laughs> like a lot of the first Sonic film, right? To a point, yeah. Okay. Which had it had the flair of the first movie, because that was the thing that sold it so well is they put a lot of emphasis on Sonic adapting to our world. I don't know if that was the whole point of their character of like they didn't want Knuckles to willingly adapt that everything was just going to bend to his will because he's a mighty warrior and I must protect the Master Emerald in it. If you don't have grapes or Cool Ranch Doritos, get the hell out of my face. <laughs> I mean, I nobody can answer that but Ider's elbow. But this was a gigantic fumble that g- genuinely makes me worried for Sonic 3. Did they actually get Idris Elba to re- reprise the role? Yes, they did. Well, that's cool. But it's one of those situations where it's just kind of like, did he just do this for the paycheck? Because he didn't say a lot. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask. I'm like, well, did he at least cook and you know the role? I've loved him since The Wire. I think he's amazing. Oh, yeah. Like, I absolutely adore Idris Elba when they were campaigning for him to be the next James Bond. I was oh, like, yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, my, my choice was him or another amazing actor, Chiwetel Ejiofor. Uh, I think both of them would have been amazing as James Bond. And actually, I even wanted Ch- Chiwetel Ejiofor at one point as Doctor Who. Hell, I wanted Idris Elba as Jon Stewart. Hmm. Yeah, he's got the build for it in the yes, height. He does. So, like, yeah, I'm I'm a fan of him. I mean, for God's sakes, I suffered through the Dark Tower just because he was in it. And I was like, well, the gunslinger thing looks kind of cool. But oh, every, every other word out of Idris's mouth in that thing, like, you've forgotten the face of your father. He's right there. Like, I haven't forgotten nothing. You you didn't set the dinner table properly. You've forgotten the face of your father. Does that even mean? <laughs> like, well, that's a that's a nightmare series of books and stuff to try turning into a film, though. My God, <laughs> yeah, it, it was pretty bad. And it wasn't the story about Knuckles that was bad. It was just the character choices. The Whipple family is just dumb. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you have one. Like the sister works for the FBI. He's a a, a sheriff. Apparently, their mother would used to be Israeli special forces, but they're all dumber than a box of rocks. <laughs> How do you give people like this authority? Writing that in in this period is crazy. Yeah, and then I think the biggest insult to the entire series was the main bad guy. Uh, I think they called him the inventor. And he worked for Robotnik at one ah, point. Mm-hmm. He looked really cool. His character was really cool. His inventions were really cool. He was in the entire series for maybe 10 minutes. Is it a known actor who played him? Do you know? Yes. The guy that played the hound. Oh, oh. wow. You uh. talk about wasted potential. I was just like, of the century. Yeah, that was horrible. But uh so I'm I'm guessing none of y'all saw the show. 
No, but you describing it to me just has me mad. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess I don't even have to bother asking the next question. Are any of you going to watch it? I might watch the first episode just to uh, see it, I guess. Uh, yeah. But I don't know. I sincerely doubt I would watch the other seven. <laughs> yeah. Well, thankfully, you don't have to watch seven. It's only, I think it's only like six episodes. Oh, it's a, it's even shorter. Okay. Yeah. Like, so the suffering is not too long. <laughs> okay. Where is that? Yeah. Ah, the Whipple family. So that's the whole plot here. Yeah. The whole plot is the Whipple family. And just when you think the family can't get any dumber, and I feel bad for saying this because at my core, I love this actor. Wade's dad, the, the bowling king, is played by Gary Ellis. Oh, wow. I love Gary Ellis. Yeah. And he is just at his absolute most foppish he could ever be. Oh, wow. Like pinky out and everything. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. <laughs> Uh, it up. Full disclosure, Ryan, I am trying very hard not to call him out since we're recording this. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, you're, you're doing okay. You just, just, just ignore him. <laughs> I, I, I almost like, you, you know what? Screw it. I am going to do it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> 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 but yeah, uh, but if you don't know who Carrie Elwes is, like, yeah, uh, Marshall just said it in the chat. Robin Hood from Men in Tights. Uh, even further back, probably the role that really kind of sent him into stardom. Wesley from The Princess Bride. And wasn't he, he also? Did, was he in Willow as well? I don't remember if he was in Willow. Saw. Oh, he's man. in Saw. He's definitely he's in, in Saw. Saw. He's also in the most recent um, Mission Impossible film. Yes. Yes, he is. Oh, I gotta watch it. Yeah. Speaking of which, yeah, I need to too. I use I used to like marathon those like once a year. I'm slacking. But all right, that is pretty much the entire topic list we have for tonight. Uh, everybody have a good time. I know I, I had an amazing time. Definitely. This was lovely. Thank you for having me. Yeah, not a problem. Yeah. Chat, you enjoy yourselves. Wake up. <laughs> <laughs> we're not talking about destiny anymore you can wake up but all right before we Mark get out police, of here we can talk to us yeah before we get out of here i want to thank everybody for watching tonight i really appreciate the support and as always before we get out of here ryan why don't you put yourself on the map and let everybody know where they can find you all right you can follow me on twitter or x as at true underscore lionheart and you know just shoot me a follow and my Twitch is True Lionheart with the O as a zero. All right. All right. Thank you for joining us. We will see you backstage. Yep. See ya. And Juju, why don't you do the same? Put yourself on the map. Let everybody know where they can find you. So y'all y'all can find me on Twitter as well at Juju underscore the maestro. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram, just Juju underscore maestro. Uh, I don't really stream anymore, so... You guys will see me on socials, um, but you can also find me on the ACAS platform. Just search Cultural Combos if you are interested in checking out the podcast. Uh, we're well into season two. We've got a lot of the on-location stuff. We've got a lot of the home content up as well. Uh, we just sat down with Iron Fist Philly. So if you're interested in more tech and talk and how one of the larger uh, community organizations in the Northeast has come about, please, by all means, uh, take a look. All right. And we will see you backstage as soon as we're done. See you later. Ah, uh, definitely did not have the, uh, I'm, I'm just going to have to get, uh, Jacqueline Drew on again and just like, just, you two just argue. Like, <laughs> <didn't do that. laughs> no, tonight was fantastic. Like, yeah, it, it was a great episode. Definitely had a nice cozy at home feel. And I, I really like that, but as always hoarder, let everybody know where they can find you. Uh, Twitch.tv backslash Hoarder Gamer. Uh, right now I'm doing Stellar Blade and uh, Suicide Squad, and I'm finishing up the third season of Diablo 4. And then there's uh, Hoarder's Comic Flex on the Hoarder Gamer YouTube channel. Uh, and uh, yeah, we talk about comics, games, and toys. So yeah, that's pretty much that's that's me. <laughs> awesome. All right. I'll see you backstage, buddy. See ya. Bye bye, everybody. 
All righty, chat. And that is a wrap for me as well. I would say you can find me, but you're here. So you already found me. So yeah. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate the support. I will be back tomorrow kind of doing my own thing. Um, as far as the scheduling goes, the next episode of the Prime Cast will unfortunately look like it will have to be June the 2nd. We are going to have to skip the bi-weekly schedule just for this time because the time frame where we would be doing episode three. I will be in Chicago competing at Combo Breaker. So you're going to have to go without the Primecast for the rest of the month. I, I do apologize for that, but we will be back as soon as I return with a ton of new stuff to talk about. I'll be keeping and uh, keeping notes and taking notes of anything cool that may be worth talking about. Uh, when I return. So thank you very much for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and tap the bell for notifications. If you're watching live here on Twitch, be sure to hit that follow button. Every little bit helps. Thanks again for watching. See you next time.